Now, let's take a look at the switching fabric. The switching fabric transfers packets from input ports to the appropriate output ports. The rate at which the switching takes place decides the rate of the service at the router and is different based on the technology used for the switching. However, it is desirable that our router is able to handle all incoming packets with the line rate at the input ports. Therefore, if number of input ports is n, it is desirable that our switching fabric is capable of switching at n times the port line rate. There are different types of switching fabrics. Switching via memory, switching via bus, and switching via crossbar interconnect. Switching via memory is the oldest switching technology. It is used in the first generation of routers. Switching via memory is also in use in some modern routers. In these routers, the incoming packet informs the routing processor through an interrupt. The routing processor would copy the packet to the system's memory. It would extract the packet destination, look up the forwarding table, and copy the packet to the appropriate port accordingly. In this method, if the memory bandwidth is limiting reads and writes of the packets to the memory to b packets per second, the forwarding throughput would be at most b divided by 2 packets per second. This is because the packet should be read to and from the memory in the process of going from input port to the memory and going from the memory to the output port. In switching via bus, an input port adds an internal label to the packet that identifies the output port it should go to. Then it puts it on a shared bus. All the output ports will see the packet on the bus, but the port whose label matches with the packet's label will keep the packet and the other ports will discard the packet. It is important to note that the bus is shared among all ports. Therefore, multiple packets arriving at the same time to the input ports of the router will see the bus busy if it is transferring a packet to an output port at that time, and they should wait for their turn to use the bus. This is a limiting factor in switching performance. Switching via an interconnect network overcomes the problem we faced in switching via bus, which was caused by waiting for a shared resource, the bus. It uses a crossbar switch using two N buses connecting N input ports to N output ports. A switch at the cross point of the bus from input A to output B would open and close to determine the switching from the input port to the output port. A closed interconnect connecting the input port to output port, which is signaled by the switch controller, sends the packet to the right output port. This structure is non-blocking. This means that packets arriving are not blocked by the packet currently being switched if they are going to different ports. A packet will only have to wait if another packet is going to the same output port this packet is going to. There are also some sophisticated versions of interconnect switching that employ multi-stage switching to even remove the blocking for the same target output up to a point. The capacity of interconnect can be scaled by running multiple switching fabrics in parallel.